This is a week where I'm doing a lot of backlog, so hey, let's talk about the Halloween event in February. The Bloody Harvest event was equal parts exciting and frustrating for me. There were things I loved about the event, other things that made the event drag on as October went into November, and for me now February, and for the event November into December. First things first, what did I love about this event? First of all, this is the first live event Borderlands has ever supported. Yes, there was that sweepstakes with Borderlands 2, the giveaway thing, but that was hosted on a website that didn't actually change the game, it just created a kind of community leaderboard. Um, but it was super exciting as a Borderlands fan to see some modernity of this live service time. Because I'm not totally against the live service model. I think there's a lot of positives to it. It's just the DRM stuff that I don't like. And seeing that injected into the gameplay was exciting as a Borderlands fan. This franchise is a decade old now, so seeing it update is a good thing. And for the first few weeks, shooting ghosts, particularly the loot ghosts, and having a small boss to fight in between things was a very welcome addition. In fact, I was playing mostly with my nephew on this event. I really enjoyed the rhythm, the gameplay loop of running some missions, running a couple missions, maybe doing a side quest, finding a collectible, and then, hey, let's go turn this into, uh, Maurice, which, by the way, was a pretty cool character. I like Maurice, and I guess he's going to be the host of all these events that they'll eventually do. But turning the ectoplasm, hectoplasm, into Maurice, and then going and doing a boss run, seeing what we got, and then heading back into it. I think that any good open-world exploration-based game, it, whether it be an adventure game like Zelda or an RPG, needs a loop. I, I really liked Fallout 4's loop, for instance. I thought Fallout 4 did an excellent job in that. I loved the experience of going out, getting a bunch of loot, you know, running a dungeon, doing some quests, experiencing some stories, then heading back to your settlements. I think Fallout 4 nailed the loop, and I thought that Borderlands, that's not just Fallout 4 actually, but I thought Fallout 4 did it probably the best, but I think that this was the closest Borderlands has ever come to accomplishing that, of having the game feel like Borderlands 2 feels a lot of the time, and even Borderlands 1 to a degree, but more so Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 really nailed that, of like, there's a lot of variety of things you can decide to invest your time into. You could go run some more quests, you could go do a DLC, you could go do a raid boss, you destruct peak, you could go do one of the headhunter packs, and when they have an event going on, it makes the game feel a lot more diverse and interesting. I think it actually, that's one of Borderlands key issues right now, is it has a very repetitive loop. There's not that middle thing like in Fallout where there's story to fill in, and there's building up your settlement in between, and so there's a longer thing, and you know this goes into like key storytelling. It's scene and sequel. Scene is you have an objective, you meet conflict, there's some kind of disaster that hits, and then your char then the character goes into sequel where they, you know, emotionally reminisce, and they have to find their new focus, and they come up with a new objective, and having a new goal they set off into the next scene. Borderlands has a settlement with Sanctuary, but Sanctuary is really just a place to dust off your boots. There's not enough going on there. There's not things to tinker with. There's not like an Iridium injector where you can reroll gear or you turn in tokens to a character. But putting Maurice there, you're, you were basically halfway there. I'd like to see some more stuff to want us to go to Sanctuary and kind of unwind and drop our tr more than just drop our treasure off, which I'm already full on my vault personally. Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that mother effing subscription button and sub for free with Amazon Prime. I would like more inventory space already. I'm, so I'm not even visiting it anymore. With no Maurice and a full inventory, there's no loop. It's just farm the boss. So what I want to see tacked on to Sanctuary is the completion of a loop. Most of this will be in my Things Borderlands Needs video, but every game, Dying Light, Generation Zero, not every game, but any really good, great action RPG has some kind of end game progression, be it vertical, horizontal, namely vertical, honestly. Even Generation Zero has a prestige system. You kill 200 ticks, you get this Under Armour thing. You eventually build an exosuit up. Borderlands has actively gone against that system. They've weakened it since release, ultimately. They, they, they doubled down. They said Guardian Rank was bigger and better than ever than Badass Rank. And they went ahead and put a hard cap on it of 850 ranks, which, granted, is super hard to get to but it really doesn't matter because there is definitely a soft cap of 15 percent on your stats anyway so you're getting these tiny little additive bonuses and they they're doing everything in their power to make sure it stays at that and that means the only thing left is gear so even borderlands 1 had proficiencies and of course borderlands 2 had unlimited badass rank borderlands 3 complete completely lacks an end game progression system an end game loop outside of farming and the farming is super generic 
Shrek at this point. Even the raid, because the raid has these really low drop rates. There's only a few weapons that are really well worth getting. And they're just missing opportunities in this regard. They're, they're not adding Pearl Essence. They're not adding Evervescence. What I, I think they should add Emerald weapons. They could just do anything. They could experiment, but they're just refusing. So, and I mentioned this because the Halloween event had that like challenge list to it. And that challenge list is why I mentioned you're halfway there already. You've got Maurice as a quest giver and an end game progression guy. If you would replace that challenge list as a more permanent feature, have one for the season, sure, but have a permanent challenge list that acts like Dying Light's prestige system and so on. And it, it's fed both by challenges and it's fed by XP and then let that build up new perks, new powers, etc. I don't know why in this zero leaderboard, zero competitive environment PvE game, they're worrying so much about fine tuning the difficulty. If they wanted to fine tune the difficulty, then they're going the wrong direction, in my opinion. And it's as simple as Destiny 2 does better raids. Much better raids. And why? Because things don't take 50 million hits to kill. It's challenging. You can die quickly, but you kill just as quick if you hit your shots. The way that... I, I'll get this more in uh, talking about Mali. Make a proper Mali 1 raid video. But the way that they chose to do the Mali 1 raid was to scale the health up to this obnoxious degree to where it took something else, show the reaper, bang the gun myself, 15 minutes to kill something. You can say we didn't have the gear. I've got a really well built Zane, I feel like. Uh, I know for a fact something else had a great Moe's. I know that Ashton had a great Amari. They, we were all well built, well geared. Tyrell doesn't have near as much time to play the game, but he was still carrying. He was still running flak with uh, Queen's Call with a really great anointment on it. And we were just challenged, just slowly, very slowly killing things for very little reward. And I know that Destiny lets you kill stuff. The, the thing is, it's not going to be like this massive tanky thing until you get to the bosses. It's all about mechanics and communication. And of course, it's extremely rewarding because you get the best stuff in the game from the uh, raids. And that's where, you know, now I'm doing like a raid video, but... When we're talking about seasonal content in the context of it's February when I'm making this video, we have to kind of talk about the raid and where Borderlands is at and that Borderlands has, yes, I know the community's totally split on this, but I don't care. I hate nerfs in Borderlands. Sometimes you got to do it if it completely, utterly breaks the game. I get that. Challenge is, a, is an element, but if a powerful build comes up, I don't see why you get rid of it because you're playing whack-a-mole and then people run out of of builds to even make i love what they did in borderlands i talked about it in the capstone video of going into it instead of against it saying okay that's a cool build that's very powerful let's give you an alternative that you might want to build into so last master brick is really strong but you can become almost unkillable with tank brick and you could build a system like that if they add an aside to guardian rank or if, maybe with the mayhem 2.0 they'll update guardian rank I'm doubtful at this point because I think they're going against that whole idea and I'm disappointed by that. Half the reason players like myself who love the franchise aren't playing. Uh, you'll see it in a lot of YouTubers. They're just not playing much anymore. I know my buddy Young Son, who loves this franchise, something, who was there at the launch of Borderlands is just waiting for new stuff to come there at the event when they announced it. So he's a true, obviously a true through and through Gearbox guy. People just aren't playing it like that, even the hardcore. And that tells me that it's just not RPGs, action RPGs are addicting by their very nature. I can get hooked on a Roblox game. I talk about this constantly on stream. If the loop is right, if the design is right, and there's elements of Borderlands where they're not doing it right. They've, they've made this great shooter. I'm going on a ramp, but they've made this great shooter and they still went into, it's going to take you 50,000 bullets to kill anything. Whereas Destiny made a great shooter and it plays like a great shooter. You know, you hit something in the head, it dies. So I feel like they're doing cool experiments and introducing new ideas like the Mali 1 raid is totally the future of raid bosses. I think they did the right thing in that, but I don't think that the way that they're adding difficulty and fine tuning challenge above all instead of new gameplay options and new ways to progress and just things to do is the right thing to focus upon. Okay, getting off the tirade. Second thing that I loved about this event is it really deserves a shout out from the highest mountain that there were zero microtransactions in this event. The past normal 
has unfortunately become an anomaly as all of the rewards offered in this event were as simple as just playing the game and doing the challenges. One of these challenges in particular was the rub though. I'll return to that in the criticisms. But any game would have said, you know, here's a pass and there might be some freebies, but you got to buy the premium pass or just sold these as like Fallout 76 would do or I love Apex Legends, but Apex Legends totally does this with its $10 loot boxes, 70 for 10. You play the event, you might get a little something, but you're going to have to shell out some money. Borderlands didn't do this. It deserves seriously a lot of kudos, a lot of kudos for doing that. The third thing I loved and really the most exciting for me, this goes into what Borderlands needs to add as well, because this is another thing where they're halfway to something great, is that for the first time in the Borderlands franchise, you got to farm a boss over and over without having to save, quit, re-invite. And it was something they can build upon with just a few tweaks. I understand on PC load times are much quicker, but myself on an Xbox One X, using an external SSD, load times are still a major obstacle in farming with friends. 45 seconds to a minute load times. My nephew is still using the 4500 RPM, I think, an old school platter HDD. Two minutes, 30 seconds, three minutes sometimes for load times. Thankfully, something they've done well and recently is made it so that the unique enemies are guaranteed, are guaranteed to show up. Farming those guys on console will was just stupid at the face of it. There was zero point in that being an element to the game to begin with. Now, we can ignore that because obviously they fixed it, but it was load and quit simulator. The recent addition of the raid and setting up hunter headhunter-esque zone with a farmable boss with this Halloween event, go out, get your hectoplasm, and you'd come back to Maurice and get to go do the boss with your buddies without saving and quitting. Now, they can build upon that. This can't be that complex to just keep around. Not Captain Han, I understand it's, it's seasonal, but why aren't we just passing collecting tokens while we're out in the world and depending on whatever map you're on so if you're on Eden and you want to go kill big tree guy that everybody goes and kills let us passively pick up tokens while we're killing the regular world enemies and don't put a cap on them because that was the thing that was bad about the hectoplasm is 25 but you're still running a mission just let those build up and then put them in just like you could put iridium in borderlands 2 to go farm raid bosses let us return these tokens at an a beacon or a portal whatever just you know a vending machine that will receive these tokens let us farm with our buddies that puts some downtime into it but it's downtime that's not spent loading you're not playing the game. Jumping into the criticisms of the event, please let the collection of all of this stuff be passive in the background at all times. All the challenges, all the ectoplasm, all the pickups, just let this keep occurring without any returning to Maurice. We can return to Maurice if we like, but the flow of doing a couple quests, returning in hay since we're in the area, running Maurice was fine to start, but by the fifth, the redundancy of backtracking to Maurice became tiresome because you can grab that ectoplasm Ectoplasm in less than two minutes. Go to Maurice, you'd get your quest for ectoplasm, you'd have it in two minutes, and you figure, eh, I'll run the boss later. You finally figure, you finally remember, oh yeah, the ectoplasm. You head back, you run the boss, and you go out, you do some more quests, and then you would forget that you had to talk to Maurice again again for the ectoplasm so that should have just been there it should have just been happening all the time and when you went back to sanctuary to throw some gear in the box you say oh hey look we got 250 ectoplasm let's run Han a few times instead of go out grab quest get the ectoplasm in two minutes figure well i want to finish these quests at least finally returning to sanctuary after you've probably collected five hundred ectoplasm getting to run him once then forgetting to grab the quest again so that everything you were doing was again wasted so that just happened a bunch in my experience like rare spawn bosses mechanic like this feel incongruent with a game that has done its utmost to smooth out the experience and eliminate barriers for the player for multiplayer for farming gearbox has clearly tried to streamline it so these things really stand out just allowing us to passively collect x resource on our adventures then turning it in for runs at our leisure would further the best of this event which which is that it was a nice way to break up the pace. As I said earlier, it was the beginnings of a more full and robust gameplay loop for the end game Borderlands players and that the cosmetic rewards were nice and having the challenge log in there was another start to potentially helping the end game out. Lastly, the continued adding of mechanics and legendaries. This should have gone in the pluses, but of course it is a big plus. The legendaries, they did add some new legendaries to the game and they added tear. 
They added tear, and this is what this game needs more of. They showed that the annoyment system can be added upon and evolved, and that's tantalizing going forward. I love when they're doing new things instead of just staying where the franchise has been for the last seven to 10 years. And I think they're playing it safe. So when they do tear and they introduce this whole new way to play and this switch on the annoyment system, because the annoyment system is one of the best things about Borderlands 3 right now. It's one of the things that's really keeping it alive. That's what players are going for and there's anointments that are powerful. Hopefully they don't nerf them because people won't want to go for them anymore. That is keeping the game alive. So when they are experimenting with systems like that, that makes me think they know what's going on and the future is bright. While this event was going on, Gearbox also released an excellent patch that brought Mayhem 4. Mayhem 4 specific drops. To me, this is the biggest thing is a lot of the game post level 50 even the first playthrough can lose its urgency and focus players need goals and continued progression which i've talked about probably ad nauseum at this point but there was right now playthrough 2 exists in a weird limbo where it's maybe worth it mostly not no one really seems to know there's supposed to be higher drop rates there's no evidence that there actually is there was no good reason to play on any higher than mayhem 1 or 2 the unique chance didn't change any adding reward for challenge is is it that's that's all they have to keep doing there should be a gear set in my mind challenges there should be putting mayhem for only drops gave players the incentive necessary to do that difficulty and be built for that difficulty they added the Mali one raid and they added a bigger bank it was a great patch and i'm most impressed with how on the money this patch was at facilitating the game's future health and player concerns of course now we're a few months past that patch and, and there's just a general ambivalence going forward of course as i'm making this video we're going to have the borderlands show today so who knows how well this video will age. In th that same context, it makes some of the more recent changes all the more odd. In their process of nerfing Vault Hunter is sometimes necessary. Sure, maybe Flax shouldn't be able to just melt everything without trying, but I still think everyone should be really nice and powerful. Being all powerful is half the fun of Borderlands. In this patch, they also changed up entire skills akin to Zero's Kunai back in Borderlands 2 that was so controversial. It's something to look for, but the Zane's buff has been welcome, needed. They've also seen his skill trees either become bugged or require certain perks that now work totally differently to function. Powerful Amari build arrived and Gearbox didn't tweak the class mod, rather they changed the skill up totally, rather than just nerf the class mod a bit. So I don't like nerfs in general, but I really don't like nerfs that rather than solve the root of the problem, just when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So I think that where we're at right now is we have to be, the Gearbox has to be careful and fans I think should look for the failing of the past two titles. And that's for all their greatness. The end game post level cap increase saw an extinction to build diversity. When you start nerfing things, then all you're doing is getting yourself down to one or two builds to really function at the level that the health and the damage is scaled to. That's why, again, I will argue that Borderlands 1 did it better just by saying, oh, that's a cool build. Here's some other ways to potentially play. Right now, I would say that Zane, of course, he's been buffed a couple more times since I wrote this, but he is nearing UVHM status in this regard in that he is just not he's beginning to not scale properly when uvhm first came out gauge just simply didn't work anymore basically and that happened for a lot of characters and and kunai was one of the only ways that zero could hold his own he was far from the most powerful character in the game he was one of the most difficult characters to run in uvhm especially on console if you didn't have gibbed that's the kind of happening that occurs sometimes with gearbox in these games pre-sequel was infamous for having a rough start and it got worse because they didn't have farmable bosses and they nerfed the one boss you could farm. I am hoping they stay in line with clearly they're responding to the situation on the ground rather than the whole the map is not the territory plugging away at things that are not making the game more enjoyable every day for us players. So this has become a video about pretty much everything Borderlands. Let's get back to the Halloween event. What did I hate? I hated that the event was too long. Giving players a month to do their card is adequate but by Thanksgiving the event has had worn out its welcome, especially because there was some failings in it. Second, I played the event consistently in my free time I had, but I still failed to run hot 25 times. Partly it's the busy work of returning to Maurice that we talked about, so I had the feeling that I had just gone out to farm something or run a mission and now I'm supposed to go back and I would just keep forgetting, which is to say, to jump straight to the point on that one, I don't understand why challenge cards are locked to a single character. I think that going forward they should be like guardian rank on top of the passive accumulation of 
of all the challenges and of the hectoplasm or tokens or whatever it is any kind of resource i think that it needs to be across all your characters because i, I probably did 10 builds on amari you know 15 on zane or whatever but you know so they could have together done it as i say i was busy during this time period as well so maybe that was part of it we we're rebuilding my computer when the halloween event was going on so my time was limited third events will be more engaging if more systems like tear are added but also vertical progression for us and game players why not a guardian rank skill tree designed just around events each event has a correlating skill if a player goes above and beyond say you kill 800 ghosts then they unlock a skill to apply tear to themselves in x way passively automatically a skill tree that is tied to the event so tear was the big special thing about this event so why not if you get a whole challenge card done and then there's one really big special challenge then your character has unlocked just like a guardian tree perk a event perk permanently and that is say you know you reload you apply tear to yourself so that you can that'll really truly incentivize players doing these events knowing that they're going to get these powerful one-of-a-kind perks in their guardian tree and i think hey have a leaderboard why is there no stat tracking outside of just the card if we want to get to get, get the community involved some of these quality of life changes along with everybody you're going to see probably Gathalion stream the game again or, or baru or these big time streamers that just don't stream the game anymore if they know that there is something truly fantastic at stake like a skill perk or a community leaderboard so that we can begin to begin to build what borderlands 2 had in spades which was people watched it people were connected to it big streamers streamed it and played it people wanted to talk about it argue it criticize it see it grow see it expand and there's just that passion i haven't seen it build with borderlands 3 borderlands 3 is not a disaster of course but i'm not seeing that passion that arrived and so i think that once you filled up your card outside of haunt i was basically over it with the ghosts but if there had been further reasons to kill ghosts and engage in the event skill tree or hey a leaderboard because if we're talking about community engagement i want to get my name out there for twitch right i want to get partnered so i'm going to try to top that leaderboard that'll get my name out there i think if things like that were around the gimmick wouldn't have worn off quite as quick as it did i've also heard players requesting an off button for the event but i feel like you can just go offline even digitally you can just play offline if you uh or on your home console for Xbox anyway. I also think that turning the event on and off, seeing how they deliver it hotfix style, may not turn out to be that easy on the technical side, but I have to finish on two notes and why I think overall the event is a win. One, zero microtransactions. Goes without saying that it's mighty refreshing. Gearbox is practicing consumer-friendly practices and good business ethics with us players. Playtime trumps mom's credit card every time as it should be. Two, Respawning bosses in multiplayer without needing a reload and invite is a massive step in the right direction, intended or not, going forward. The event opened the door to making that system mechanically possible, which would be another welcome quality of life change in a game ripe with quality of life changes. It's already a massive strength of Borderlands 3 that so much has been streamlined. Continue the process, Gearbox. Hone the blade like a samurai sword. I'll see you at twitch.tv forward slash stuck on Pandora. Thank you for watching. We port.